the part of the North Island where I come from was the first part missionized and colonized. So it was where those kind of axes of of clash of religious and cultural and um, and colonial kind of impact occurred. But throughout the far north of the North Island, virtually all Māoris are Anglicans. We were deeply, profoundly moved and affected by the coming of missionaries who came long before the colonials. Māori people obviously were feisty and self-determining and quite independent. I think as, a, as an indigenous people, the fact that we sort of have led the indigenous revival project globally is testimony to the kind of people resilient, fearless, but I think it's the reason we've learned somehow to overcome the awful legacy of our own colonisation. Being the first and only Māori person with a PhD in theology was, I mean, it created an enormous sense, first of pride, and then the burden of expectation as to what that actually meant for my people. I mean, it was kind of ironic because although I was the first, it wasn't as if Māori people haven't been worshipping people, people of faith, people with a deep interest in religion. But what I discovered on my own academic journey was that somehow theological education or the seminaries or the institutions of learning were, were not sympathetic to the, the learning needs of, of Indigenous, certainly of Māori. I think that the biggest project that's, that's consumed me since I graduated really from the GTU has been not to be the only or the first or the pioneering or the, or the lonely. It's really been to say, look, if I can do it, now my responsibility is to look, to look around me to see who else it is that I can now mentor, raise up, um, you know, work alongside to, to, so, that we're, so that I am creating a small cadre of, of, of similarly, similarly minded or similarly impassioned educators to carry, to, to carry the, the project forward. And so I've really just focused on, on two things. One, how to transform the existing institutions because we're not going to raise up a generation of anybody if, this, if nothing changes within an institution which is inherently oppressive or unsympathetic or unfriendly or you know, monolingual, monocultural, all of those things. So it's a two-fold project. One is to transform the existing institution and the second one is to work hard to kind of raise up this next generation of, of students to become scholarly leaders eventually in their own right. I think in all sincerity that the GTU as a consortium of theological schools and centres of, of excellence and of research is still even in 2010 perfectly placed, perfectly composed to provide any student anywhere in the world the optimum graduate theological educational experience. Partly because of its geographic location, but also because of its position in relation to the University of California. But also I think the, the faculty who are clearly still attracted here provide that perfect kind of mix of diverse presence, thinking, scholarship, and without exception, they are people who are encouraging of excellence and scholarship without in any sense denying, I think, the excellence of being that people bring here in terms of their experience, their culture, their language, their denominational tradition, and their deep yearnings to become even better educated. <laughs>